audience again. And uh, so we, we, we are already uh, connected with California with Mr. Paul, Paul von Hartmann from California Cannabis Ministry. And uh, so he will, uh, he will talk about it, uh, climate changes and uh, hemp. This is uh, one of the most important uh, thematic of uh, this time. Um, he arranged new book. Uh, he worked uh, a lot of years in this project. And uh, Paul, you are not alone. We work too here in Europe. And uh, very welcome, uh, please applause audience for uh, our uh, California Paul. California Paul. Paul, world is your, world is your, please. Thank you so much. My and friends, I, I wish I could see you. Unfortunately, I can't, but I am certainly there in spirit and I appreciate everything that you've done to make it possible for me to, to share this message with you. I, I uh, am a humble messenger of, uh, I think, uh, an important uh, message, and, and that is to point out how critically important cannabis is in resolving climate change and many other problems at the same time. So I'll begin with climate change, but of course there are many uh, growth associated with what happens regarding our climate, and so we'll just see where it goes. I don't have a, a scripted presentation this morning. It's it's three o'clock in the morning in California. I'm at the base of Mount Shasta, which is one of the the, the most um, impressive physical uh, features on the planet, and so hopefully. That will uh, carry all the way to Slovenia, and uh, the message will be delivered uh, as it as it needs to be. Um, as you all know, if we don't resolve climate change, it really won't matter what we do figure out, what we do fix. Um, it is a, a global uh, threat. It is um, a time of global emergency, really, um, anything can happen. Um, the uh, point of my book is to offer a time-limited solution to uh, the process that we're currently involved in. And what is happening now is that the systems that determine the quality of life this planet have been wounded. Essentially, the Earth uh, has been wounded. We have wounded the atmosphere, we've wounded the, the hydrologic cycle, and we're wounding ourselves in doing so. And cannabis is a medicine for our bodies, but it's also a medicine for the systems of the Earth. To look at cannabis on a global scale and see that it plays a very critical role in the balance of our atmosphere is, is a priority. And when you understand uh, what I have come to learn, uh, you'll appreciate how important it is and how limited amount of time we have to make a difference in what happens next year and the year after that. And so... I can share with you how I came to this information. I was, I've been a cannabis scholar for about the last 24 years. I founded Project Peace, and I learned about all the different uses for the cannabis plant, um, namely the nutritional benefits of the whole plant, the seeds, the leaves, the, the flowers, even raw, um, for like, nutrition. And so that caught my attention and then I realized that it was the only crop that produces complete nutrition and sustainable biofuels from the same harvest. And that was a really key uh, uh, realization for me to understand how 
essential cannabis is to mankind's sustainable existence on this planet. And what happened uh, in 2006 for me was that I read in Guardian News about scientists working in Sweden who were studying the boreal forests and the atmospheric aerosols that rise from the boreal forests up into the atmosphere and reflect the solar UV radiation away from the Earth. And the sun's UVB wavelengths are, are refracted by the uh, aerosols, by these little liquid crystals that come off of the, excuse me, off of the boreal forests and are produced by marine phytoplankton. And they block the UVB radiation by reflecting it. They also block the UVB radiation by forming bright and persistent clouds. And so the aerosols, the fragrant, volatile aerosols, rise up into the stratosphere and shield the earth from the sun. That, for me, was uh, uh, the, the spark that ignited my book. And because I, I realized that cannabis produces the same atmospheric aerosols as the boreal forests and the marine phytoplankton. But see, we didn't realize that the aerosols, the monoterpene uh, and the sesquiterpenes produced by the boreal forests and the phytoplankton performed that function until 2006. And so we cut down half of the boreal forests and we killed about half of the marine phytoplankton before we understood that the aerosols they produce shield the earth from the sun. So now we know that we have half the concentration of terpenes in the atmosphere as we had 50 years ago, which is a major shift fundamental shift in the operating systems of this planet because more UVB radiation causes a lot of problems for, for everyone, for all life on Earth. Increased UVB radiation is uh, a ubiquitous threat that can be measured by the uh, UV radiance monitoring equipment that was set up decades ago, which has shown that we have increasing UV radiation all over the planet, but particularly at the latitudes where the phytoplankton and the boreal forest are in highest concentrations. And so um, there's a, a feedback loop that relates the UV radiation, the phytoplankton and the boreal forests that um, is accelerating our progress or our, our degeneration in the wrong direction. Cannabis is the only crop that is capable of producing the atmospheric aerosols needed to replace what's been lost with the death of the boreal forests and the marine phytoplankton. I'm pretty sure that's an accurate statement. Um, the fact is we need to expand the arable base with a non-invasive pioneer crop that produces <laughs> food and fuel and herbal therapeutics and uh, social influence and um, a lot of other <clears throat> things that people need in order to thrive. And fortunately, we have <laughs> the, the opportunity to communicate globally and achieve a total shift in values from cannabis is illegal to cannabis is essential because this cannabis is our functional interface with the operating systems of this planet. Without cannabis, mankind can never achieve sustainability on this planet. And as it is, because we cut down half of the boreal forest and killed half of the marine phytoplankton, that used to protect the earth from the sun, we have initiated uh, feedback loops that are taking us in the wrong direction faster than most people appreciate. Faster.
ask for most people to know. The other benefits of cannabis uh, in sequestering carbon, uh, nine tons of carbon per acre, uh, if you factor in uh, organic soil, it's been estimated uh, to sequester about three tons of carbon then you get about uh, 12 tons of carbon sequestered per acre for growing season. And so it's an enormous, uh, enormously important and effective tool for expanding the arable base, producing more essential, complete essential nutrition at the same time that you're producing sustainable biogenic biofuels that are critical to uh, our diversion from the fossil fuels addiction that we were born into. We were born into a, a, a mistake, into a lie, really, about uh, the true value of the cannabis plant because people had vested interests in other uh, more expensive, unevenly distributed products that they wanted to sell. But as a result of that, Wounded the planet, and the Gaia therapeutic solution uh, is the cannabis plant in order to produce the food, the fuel, the paper, the cloth, how many of the other things that um, we need. But most importantly, perhaps, is the uh, the cloud forming. I like to call it. Uh, the production of atmospheric aerosols that serve as cloud compensation nuclei for bright and persistent clouds. And um, to recognize that increasing UVB radiation, there's nothing good about it. Um, uh, the, the levels of radiation that exist now um, are affecting called the indicator species, the bees, the birds, the bats, the marine phytoplankton, the coral reefs, uh, the uh, amphibians, uh, frog populations. I mean, all of the indicator species are showing that there is something affecting uh, the world uh, on, a, on a global scale. And very little attention has been paid up to this point to the effects of UVB radiation on our immune systems, on genetic, uh, affecting genetic mutation, um, and also increasing the solubility of mercury, arsenic, and selenium compounds out of aqueous solution. And these are things that uh, really need to be uh, addressed and guarded and uh, moved up on the list of priorities so that we can transcend the prohibition uh, the one crop that is capable of doing so much to um, to heal the earth and to, to assure that our children have a livable planet. Uh, right now, there are uh, many uh, threats to optimum health in the environment, uh, the chemical contamination of the air, water, and soil. Among them, cannabis is capable of cleaning much of that pollution up and regenerate the uh, damaged soils and regenerating the certified lands in order to expand the carrying capacity of the planet. Because um, we need to throw up a monoterpene screen into the atmosphere. In California, in particular, we need the monoterpenes in our atmosphere because we're right now in the middle of a, a severe drought, uh, several years into a severe drought. And to produce clouds that produce the rain, that produce the snow, uh, we need to grow our atmospheric aerosols. We need to seed the atmosphere in Northern California with terpenes so that we can grow our way out of the ground. Uh, we can farm clouds uh, to produce the, the rain and snow uh, this winter because the terpene production and the terpene release by cannabis uh, 
peace at harvest because it's a physical impact of harvesting the plants the terpenes uh, are released and uh, it's it's interesting to know that terpenes have antiviral antifungal antibiotic properties that uh, and antioxidants properties as well and so um, one of the theories that I I pose in my book, one of the seemingly obvious uh, assumptions is that uh, the, the snow and the rain that are enhanced with monoterpenes um, have uh, been purified biogenically by the trees uh, in releasing, or by the cannabis, in releasing the terpenes into the atmosphere. The antifungal, antiviral, antibiotic and antioxidant properties of the terpenes in the rain uh, may play a part in purifying the hydrologic cycle. And so it's very important for us to study these things, but we know for sure that there's no other crop that produces complete nutrition and sustainable for biofuels in the same harvest. That makes cannabis both and essential. And since cannabis is a herb and not a drug, because as we all know, drugs don't make seeds, herbs make seeds, uh, we can leave the mistake that was made two generations ago behind in the past as a lesson of what not to do. We know the, the harms of prohibition, but we need to recognize that the benefits cannabis is abundance and how we can shift values. It's a pivotal whole shift in values from illegal to essential that must make record time. Unfortunately, we have the ability to communicate globally, electronically, instantaneously. And so for the first time in our human social evolution, we have the ability to achieve that shift in values in a timely way. And that's the challenge of our generation. I wrote the manifesto for the Cannabis College in Amsterdam in 1997. And the title of it is The Fundamental Challenge of Our Time. And that's what this is. The fundamental challenge of our time is to, to recognize that the lies that we were born into are taking us toward an unthinkable future. Systemic collapse can come at any time because the uh, extinction level events that have been initiated by the fundamental uh, degradation of the natural order and the disrespect of nature that our social evolution has uh, achieved, not in a good way, <laughs> um, is our challenge to reverse because we have the ability to do things that our parents uh, did not have the opportunity to do. We have the, uh, the, the perspective on cannabis that affords us uh, the opportunity to be grateful for um, recognizing the true value of an essential Farming terpenes uh, in the 21st century uh, is a priority. And there are many crops that produce terpenes, um, but there are no other crops that uh, produce the variety of uh, commodities and value food products that a cannabis does. And at the same time, uh, recondition the soil and the air and the water. So uh, if people are concerned about climate change and you know apparently people are, um, the good news is that there is something we can do about it. The, 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 the caveat is that it's a time limited opportunity. Time is the limiting factor in the equation of survival. That's why I, I produced a, a film Cannabis versus climate change, 
handbook and hopefully between book and film, uh, the message can be delivered. Wonderful Lord. Wonderful Lord. You need one applause. You are very really well. Thank you so much. We, see, we can Thank see you. your film in uh, our social media. Uh, about the World Time Congress, and uh, yes, uh, we will promote him too. So far, where is your Thank you so much, my family and friends. I um, uh, trust that I'll be uh, seeing you uh, next year in person, and Wonderful. I will attempt to uh, initiate the uh, protocol that um, has uh, the greatest uh, time efficiency, because time efficiency is really the, the most important part of the message, is that time is the limiting factor in the equation of human survival. And if we can initiate uh, an emergency preparedness protocol globally that is referenced in several uh, federal documents in the United States, we can finally achieve the, the uh, conversion from armies to farmings, because really that's uh, social evolution, mankind's social evolution depends on our embracing the, the, the peaceful abundance that cannabis offers, rather than the uneven distribution limited toxic resources. Cannabis is an opportunity for mankind to heal the earth in the same way that we heal our bodies with it. Um, I just turned 60 years old. I have a, a very healthy uh, eight-year-old child um, who is um, the, the future generation. You know, he, he, our children our, our inspiration is our, our hope for the future and the legacy that we give them to face the challenges that they have ahead of them uh, will determine whether our existence is um, justifiable because we continue to use toxic uh, chemicals, we continue to use fossil fuels and even though we know that they're creating problems, when there is uh, a proven alternative waiting to be planted, and in the United States this spring uh, or, or this fall, the harvest of the feral uh, hemp is going to waste again. And so it's a cautionary uh, footnote to uh, recognize that how far behind the curve we are, and how important it is for us all to work together to say this crop is essential, it can't be illegal, if it's this valuable, it's not possible to prohibit it. Because it's beyond the moral accountability of any court to impose scarcity of uh, an essential natural resource. Our freedom to farm every bird-bearing seed is the first test of religious freedom because uh, every religion, doesn't matter which one you look at, they all have uh, the, the gift of the plants and the animals for man to use in order to uh, live in harmony on this planet. And if if we let the time uh, escape us, that's the only thing we can't make more of. We can more of everything. We can always make more money, but we can't make more money. Well, and, uh, um, we have some questions here. Uh, 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 have you maybe uh, some researchers in this uh, place uh, on climate changes and uh, yeah. is maybe somebody working this uh, researchers? Well, I am initiating uh, contacts with people here in California in order to uh, study cannabis and uh, uh, the benefits of its uh, reintroduction into uh, a regionally based economy. I'm currently um, living in California and attempting to uh, vitalize. Uh, Mobile mill 
about it uh, um, there is
Yes.
do you feel in your book? What is your next step in the United States? Well, I think the developments in the superconductor technology using the vast fibers from the stock um, to make batteries, to make electric and storage buses is a major, uh, it's, it's a three leaps forward in uh, energy storage technology because it is much more affordable than the current uh, industry standard. It's much easier to manufacture than the current industry standard for batteries for making energy storage. And it is, um, it outperforms current industry standard for uh, storing electrical energy. And so I think that uh, we can say with confidence in the, in the contemporary cannabis culture, which is the world's oldest global culture, um, that our stock is going up. Is this battery is this battery already in work? Is it, sorry, is this uh, battery already uh, in work? Is this uh, end, uh, innovation is uh, ready for started uh, for produce, or you uh, work only in uh, you are uh, in innovation part? Well, I am seeking. I am seeking to, to become involved with the production of hemp uh, for many different uh, products, but I am currently um, very interested in the potential for combining the production of electricity uh, using the cellulose from the stem to um, to uh, charge the, the superconductor batteries made from gas fibers. So you use the whole stock to produce energy and to store the energy. And this, the mill that I, that I live at uh, is, uh, has not been operating for a long time, but the, the buildings that are here are enormous and they're on the scale that's necessary. The infrastructure exists here on the scale that's necessary to handle uh, a large volume of agricultural material. And we can process the seeds, we can process the, the stems, and we can teach people how to garden and farm uh, cannabis uh, in, in, in proximity to um, you know, the different types of uh, plants that the, the marijuana producing, the therapeutic, herbal therapeutic plants, and the industrial and food production plants, um, all of that can be done uh, in proximity to one another using the techniques that I'm developing right now in order to resolve the uh, cross-pollination uh, difficulties that that seem to be uh, inhibiting the development of the hemp industry in the United States. Because right now in the United States, you're more likely to harvest marijuana uh, for recreational purposes or for medicinal purposes um, than you are to harvest it for uh, making fuel or producing food. And that's just wrong. Um, <laughs> it needs it, it needs to, to be uh, reintroduced so that we can uh, start making paper and fuel and all these different things from industrial hemp without threatening the integrity of the genetics that are being grown to produce herbal therapeutics because the herbal therapeutics are extraordinary in their own right. Um, but what needs to happen is that people need to understand that uh, the THC molecule, the cannabis, uh, psychoactive cannabis molecule is not dangerous. And that's the, the, the lie that was implanted in our social evolution 78 years ago. And for us to understand and to get past that fear of something that not only can hurt us, but can really prevent a lot of uh, problems for us, we need to achieve that in record. Time is the, the fun word in my presentation because it's the most important word. And we need to recognize that drugs 
stuff like seeds, we're just making beans, and our premium to farm really bearing seed is the first test of religious freedom. The California Cannabis Ministry is an individual ministry. Uh, it's a secular ministry. There's no religious dogma associated with it. It's just the rec- pure recognition of respect for nature and the golden rule you know, that Moses would have to do with you. And applying that to the campus plan because it is our plan interface with the natural world. It's how we can be here on this planet. It will allow us to exist without harming Mother Earth. And that is, right now, that's the object of the game. We have to figure that out soon. And we have to move forward. And hopefully, um, in, in your countries, um, that can happen uh, faster than it's happening in, in my country. But I think, you know, it's a it's a push pull thing, so if you guys uh, can make progress, that'll inspire us to yes. become the, <laughs> the inertia. We are very glad that it. we can even do it. This, uh, 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 this is zero euro project. Uh, we, uh, anybody here is uh, like to go out there, and uh, if it's not so high quality, like you uh, expect anybody or somebody. Uh, must understand this too that this is only volunteer work because we really share the voice about hemp around the world. And just a, uh, one question more: uh, How is in California? Uh, you can uh, grow in hemp now. Uh, is this uh, forbidden already, or how is this uh, going on? Well, the federal government passed legislation last year that said. Uh, it was okay to grow uh, hemp, but uh, there were limitations on who could uh, who could initiate the projects. It had to be associated with uh, uh, a university uh, or a research institute. Uh, just a regular farmer, no, cannot go and, and, and plant hemp. So it's um, forbidden. So it's forbidden. State legislation yes. has also passed in California that says you can grow hemp, but only if the federal government says it's okay. And so there's sort of a, uh, a very imprecise uh, situation. I'm hoping to be able to initiate the essential civilian demand protocol in order to accelerate the recognition of cannabis as a strategic food resource. It's been recognized Seven presidential executive orders, one of which is, is currently in force, Executive Order 13603, signed by President Obama in 2012, provides for access to uh, strategic resources in a time of emergency preparedness. And also uh, the Code of Federal Regulations, number 44, in the United States also refers to essential civilian demand as a protocol for accessing uh, strategic resources. And we're in a situation now that warrants essential civilian demand for hemp because it is a strategic resource and it is a unique resource that um, can be the difference between our survival or our extinction. And it's our choice whether we achieve extinction or try for sustainability. And if we want to try, we have to grow now. And we have to grow it as fast as we can. And in as many soil and climate conditions that it may be able to adapt and pray that it's not too late. Yes, but uh, if we wish uh, some effect in a very short time, we must grow in that hemp all around the world altogether. Uh, is uh, small like uh, a small country like is Slovenia or here uh, small countries uh, uh, together in the European Union. Uh, we are very small players here uh, in this uh, area, but uh, uh, I think that the United States can be can be big player here in, uh, in, in climate changes if they uh, live uh, free growing hemp. So, 
what your government think about it, climate changes and uh, hemp? Is this uh, discussion in the United we States are, already? Uh, <laughs> I lose your picture, and uh, so maybe I. This is over. Paul, we lose you. I, I I take you too heavy question. I suppose so, and I hope that you will save this my question in uh, uh, in United States. So uh, we will try uh, try find find you for some minute then we will go in lunch break. Um, Paul we call you again. <laughs>